So let's talk about vector components. Draw a vector A, label it near the head of the vector, and remember the tail is at the origin. This vector has components which are basically like the x and y coordinates. It will have an upward or a vertical component that we will call a y and a horizontal component that we will call a x. Typically what we do is we take the x or the y component and we move it over so that we get a right triangle. Um, and remember that the angle between the vector and the x-axis would go here and we would label the length or the magnitude of the vector by just writing uh, a without an arrow above it. So this is our vector a. It makes a right triangle and we can use um, the laws of sine, cosine, and tangent to figure out what the components ax and ay are going to be. Let's start by looking at ax. ax is adjacent to the angle theta. So we can say that cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, or in this case, ax over a, the x component over the magnitude. Then if I multiply both sides by the magnitude, I get an equation for ax. ax equals a cosine theta. For the vertical component, ay, it is opposite of theta, like not adjacent to. So we can use sine and say that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or ay over a. Then again, we can multiply both sides by a to get rid um, of a on the right side. And now I have an equation for the y component, a times sine theta. So these are our equations for the x and the y components of any vector. Let's do a few example problems to see how this works. Find the components of vectors a, b, and c. So let's start with a. There is a magnitude of 4.1 and an angle of 14 degrees. So I'm going to draw the components before I find them. So a is a, an arrow or a vector that's going up and to the right, so that tells me I need to have a component going right. So I draw a little arrow there, and then up. And I'm going to label this ax and ay. And they're at a right angle to each other. OK, so I can see that um, 14 degrees is adjacent to my ax, so I can use cosine. Um, and 14 degrees is opposite of ay, so I can use sine. ax equals a cosine theta. So 4.1 times cosine of 14 degrees, which is going to give me 3.978. So let's just call that 4. Um, and the x component is pointing to the right, so that is a positive 4. For the y component, I would do a times sine of theta. Oh, and I should call this theta a, since we have three angles. Okay. So 4.1 times sine of 14 degrees gives me 3. Sorry, not 3 point, 0 0.99, or we can just call that 1. And again, my y component points up, so I would make that a positive 1 for my y component. So the x component is 4, and the y component is 1. For b, I have a vector that points up and to the left. So this tells me that I have an upward pointing y component, so that'd be a y, <coughs> and a leftward pointing x component, a x. These make a right angle with one another. 
before we work on that um, x and y component, actually I shouldn't have called them a, that's crazy, they should be b, um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and write ax equals 4 and ay equals 1. Um, then we're going to get rid of this work so that we have some space for the vector b. Okay, so b, y, and b, x. So b, y, and b, x, these components, they're at right angles to one another. Um, but you'll notice that this 26.6 uh, it's not a unit circle angle, meaning that this angle is not in reference to the x-axis. If I wanted to find the unit circle angle, then what I would do is I would take 90 degrees and add that 26.6, which would give me 116.6. Now, if I do that, if I find the unit circle angle, then I can go ahead and use cosine of the angle and sine. Because if you use the unit circle angle, cosine and sine will always give you the correct um, components. So this would be uh, B is 4.5, that's the hypotenuse, so 4.5 times cosine of, again we use the unit circle angle, 116.6, and that would give me, I'm actually going to show you on the calculator so you see this, 4.5 cosine 116.6, so this is going to give me negative 2.01, so we'll call that negative 2. Now that negative is important because it's pointing left. So I need that component bx to be a negative to the left. And then by is going to be 4.5 times sine of 116.6. So we put that in our calculator. 4.5 sine 116.6. And we get 4.02, we'll round that to a positive 4. So a positive 4. And that's important because that y component, again, is pointing up. So if instead, if instead of using 116.6, I wanted to use the 26.6, um, then what would happen is two things. First of all, that angle is actually adjacent to the y component. So I would need to write um, cosine of theta b is equal to adjacent by over hypotenuse b, um, and then multiply both sides by b. So I would get by equals b cosine, which notice that regularly if we use unit circle angles, sine is what we use for y. But again, since I'm going to use this angle 26, um, I would say that it's adjacent and have to use cosine. And then this would give me um, 4.5 times cosine of 26.6, which is 4.5 cosine 26.6. So that's going to give you the same, a positive 4.02, so we would just say 4. Then for x, um, x is now opposite of that angle, so I would need to use sine, because sine of theta b is opposite over the hypotenuse, in this case bx over b. And again, multiply both sides by b to get bx. And bx is b sine theta. So now the x component um, isn't using cosine like we would use if we had the unit circle angle. Instead, we have to use sine because it's opposite of the angle. And this is going to give us 4.5 times sine of 26.6 degrees. Now, if we put this in our calculator, 4.5 
sine 26.6. We get something a little weird. Before, when we used the um, the cosine in 116.6 to get our x component, we got a negative 2. The calculator told us negative 2, which is good because the component pointed left. But now I'm using 26.6, not a unit circle angle, and I'm going to get a positive 2. So because I used this internal angle and not a unit circle angle, um, I'll never get a negative for my sine or cosine component. Um, and if I treat this as just a right triangle on its own, meaning I don't use the unit circle angle, then that means I have to take a look at the component after I've gotten a number and decide if it should be positive or negative. So when I get this 2 in my calculator, I would look at my component and because it's pointing left, decide that that should be a negative 2. So you can treat it as a, a standalone right triangle or if you prefer, so long as you always find the unit circle angle, this thing right here, uh, if you use the unit circle angle, you can always use cosine for x and sine for y uh, and not worry about anything else. So let's clear up some space um, and let's do that for c. Let's use the unit circle angle. So first of all, to find the unit circle angle, I'm going to think about what would this angle be right here. Um, so that angle is going to be 90 plus another 90, so 180, plus 33.7. So 180 plus 33.7, which gives me 213.7. Okay, so that's the angle. So now if I want to find my x component, cx, it's pointing left, so I hope that it's negative. And then my y component, cy, it's pointing down, so hopefully it's negative. Remember, they're at right angles. Um, I can use this unit circle angle and cosine for x, sine for y. So cx equals c cosine theta. We'll say theta c, right, because that's what we call the angle. Um, and that's going to be 3.6, that's the hypotenuse, or the magnitude of the vector, times cosine of 213.7, which gives me 3.6. Cosine 213.7. Okay, so that gives me negative 299. We'll call that negative 3, which is good because I have an arrow pointing left, which means it should be negative. Um, and then when I do CY, I can use C sine theta, which is going to be 3.6 times sine of 213.7. And that gives me. 3.6 sine 213.7. That gives me ooh, negative 1.99 or negative 2, which again, I look and yes, the arrow is pointing down, so hopefully I get a negative component. So now let's do uh, a problem where you're asked to draw this. 14, uh, draw the vector A, 14, 53 degrees, and find its x and y components. Well, I would graph y and x, and then think, where would 53 degrees be? Well, it'd be in the first quadrant, so that's theta, about 53 degrees. And then I draw a line that represents 14, and we'll call that A. So to find AX, which would be this component, I'm sorry, this component here, and AY, this component here, then I would treat the hypotenuse as the magnitude A, and AX would be a cosine theta, which would give me 14 times cosine of 53 degrees, um, which is 8.42, we'll say 8.4. Um, and then the Y, uh, the Y component, we would do a sine of the angle, and we do 14 times sine of 53 degrees, which would give me 11.18, we'll call that 11.2. Okay, great, in this video you learned how to 
find the x and y components of a vector. This is a process that's known as resolving the vector into its components. So congratulations, you have now resolved vectors into components. You're great and awesome. Goodbye.